All right, we are back. Welcome to Art of the Experience. This is episode number three, and today we're going to focus all about a little place down the road called Knott's Berry Farm. Knott's Berry Farm is celebrating 100 years, kind of a big deal, and to help celebrate this milestone, I've uh, invited two good friends of mine to come and chat about it. They know a little bit about Knott's Berry Farms themselves. We have Eric Linksweiler and Christopher Merritt. Hey, guys. Hello. How's it going, guys? Thank you so much. I mean, uh, thanks for having us. I am uh, honored that you would spend time and kind of talk about this stuff. And, you know, this podcast for me is all about the artwork behind these experiences. And I don't think there's anyone better to talk to you for Knott's Berry Farm type stuff than you guys. So that really means a lot that you're that you're here hanging out. So 100 years. I mean, it almost kind of got pushed back a little bit with the pandemic, but we're looking past that. And you know, it's happening. It might be a year later. Some of this stuff still says 2020. That's okay. We won't worry about that. But what it's do you think okay. so far? I'm just really glad that they can have it. <clears throat> yeah, totally. It, I mean, it, it's, I, I, I don't care if they celebrate the hundredth for two more years. I'm fine with it. It looks good. I mean, I always say this, especially lately, I think in the past few years with the Boysenberry Festival, it just seems like the park is firing on all cylinders and it's, it's one of those things where I always kind of think of Knott's Berry Farm as almost like the underdog in Southern California as theme parks. And that might be why I like it. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the show. But, you know, I like Knott's Berry Farm for everything that it's not. And everything that you can't do at Disneyland, you could do it at Knott's Berry Farm, right? And because I love yeah. both. And I've worked at both. But uh, before we get to all that, yeah, Knott's is turning 100. We got to meet each other again at the, um, the media night for the kickoff. And that was pretty special, too. That was like a reunion of sorts as well. It was an amazing yeah. night. It was so cool. Yeah. It, it, it just, felt just good to be back. Whole, yeah, just the whole, the, the relighting of, of the K. Oh. And I mean, uh, Steve Knott was there and Chris Crump and his sisters who all worked on Knott's Berry Tales and saw a lot of people I, I, I knew from either social media or just, you know, theme park fandom in general. It was a really, really cool night. It was one of those nights that went, you know, like that. And you're kind of like, literally, wow, <laughs> that all just happened like that. And it just, it, for me, it was one of my big first outings since the pandemic. I've, I've been locked down pretty hard. And so I, you know, to, to your question before, it's like everyone got robbed last year and Knott's got robbed last year. Exactly. You know, we all kind of lost a year. And uh, for, for us, you know, we, we love the farm so much. In fact, we, Eric and I and a couple of other friends, we actually like uh, celebrated uh, his birthday in the in the parking lot by the chicken dinner <laughs> restaurant in the middle of the pandemic last year. You know, wasn't you know, chicken to go was open, but that was it, right? You know, and, but just just yeah. to kind of be close to it. I know that's a very nerdy thing, but we it was really nice. It was like, hey, we're we're back on the property. So, I I I echo what Eric said. You know, they they can have two more years of hundred celebration, as far as I'm concerned, because they got robbed. I think that'd be just fine. Yeah. What a big deal it was when they opened up the chicken dinner restaurant to go. Like, and yeah. that was only a couple months, maybe, I don't know, just, but it seemed like forever because yeah. it was at the beginning of everything. But when they opened that up, I'm like, support your local berry stand, go get some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just grateful that the taste of events were so massively huge and successful. Those taste of events attracted a lot of people. And may I say, inspired other southern california theme parks to do the same thing <laughs> maybe in the whole country it inspired it you yeah. know i it's yeah. safe to say that they, they paved the way for the pandemic uh, festival i for always, how many times always. i i said last year i said why isn't everyone else doing what knott's berry farm is doing because they did it so successfully and they really were the first people to get people find a way to get people back in the gates while you know staying safe and and being compliant with the social distancing they did a hell of a job and it was really really wonderful because again it was something other theme parks just kind of sat around and dithered i felt like yeah i think they were just kind of sitting back and go taste of that's a good name let's just run with it right. the whole country started <laughs> right. no, yeah. they should have patented that yeah well that that was so cool and I, I i really think knots needs to get the credit for that and that media night i just had to make sure to tell john and ken who are like who who get knots better than anyone as well like thank you that really kind of saved a lot of people and i think yeah. it it made a lot of new lifelong fans like when people really needed to get get out and try to keep their mental sanity 
not to, was able to help them do that. So I think in the long run, yeah. I think they're going to get more diehard fans because it, it means even more to them too. And can we talk about like the insane fever dream of not only is Knott's Berry Tales back, which I never in a bazillion years no way. thought yeah. would ever, of. ever, ever happen, right? Yeah. But freaking Whittles is back. <laughs> Whittles, the walk around character is back. I'm like, I, I thought it was hallucinating. Happening? You've seen the street. Yeah, even the street. Around. Right. I, yeah. Throwback Central, yeah. everything. They get it. At this event that Sam's talking about, they had a big presentation on their stage where they, you know, talked about celebrating 100 years. They even they brought up audio of Walter Knott that Eric and I had never heard before. So we need to track that down. But, but... My mother, my grandmother, my family had come west with covered wagons for the railroads. And we thought that those people at that time had something really that would be good for our generation to have a little better understanding of. So we started out to build a little town. It was a stirring period, a period of people who went through great hardships and yet they accomplished a very great deal. That's why we started Ghost Town. We're glad you called to join us. We're happy as can be. But hearing the Knott's Berry Tales theme on the stage, I, I just, I, I, was, I was floored. I was kind of in shock that whole night. It was a great, great night. For sure. And you know, like the 50th at Disneyland was probably like the last biggest milestone. And I still worked at the company at, at Disneyland back in the day then. Mm. And this, this feels as special to it. You know what I mean? And um, I think some of the people that work at Knott's now also worked on that. So it has, it has that gravitas with it, you know, yeah. and as it yeah. should, like a hundred years is a big deal. And, yeah. you know, let's have a podcast and talk about a hundred years. Let's squeeze a hundred years of history into one podcast. But to be honest, sure. we could talk about not stuff forever, but I wanted to focus on <laughs> just the artwork that helped inspire Knott's Berry Farm. You know, I, obviously the very first thing that, that started it, it yeah, the boysenberry, but it was a chicken dinner restaurant. You know, and then, you know, people lined up for miles and then let's build a ghost town to go with it. And then, you know, we all we all know the history. We all love it. Um, oh, I don't I, think everyone knows that history. That's why we keep yeah, that's true. It's true. Spouting it as yeah. much as possible. It, it, not you know, many people realize that this wasn't a master planned uh, community, that it was born out of a farm and it, it was never intended to be a theme park. It just kept going and growing. And, and that's probably half the charm. And, you know, it's, it, it yes, is, absolutely. it's mom and pops. And I mean that in a flattering way. And I always try to like, if I'm doing design or if I'm trying to do something, I always try to make it not mom and pops, but like in this case, yeah. mom and pops is a good thing. That's why it's not yeah. Disneyland. Yeah. Disneyland is not there, mom there, and pops. There's not some planned community pre-thought out design like there was with Disneyland with, it, you know, with Walt's brilliant hub concept. It, the, the not children always said it grew like topsy, you know, meaning it, it just kind of, had little tentacles. There was no master planning behind <laughs> that park. And some people don't like it, but I, I think there's a certain amount of charm uh, to the way Knott's is, is laid out. Um, there is a eh, folks, folksiness is maybe too cloying of a word, but but the way it's like, I just, it's, it's ultimately charming. And you have to and, find your way. It's not a clear yeah. path. You know, you get to explore that way. And I think that's what's kind of cool. Well, yeah, let's I, dive I, into some artwork. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, with, if we could pimp our Knott's Preserved book, which of course, Eric, of course. Eric and I have been working on for forever and uh, is in yes. its third printing 100th anniversary edition, which you can only get at the farm or you can, I think you can mail order it actually from, uh, you'll have to maybe find the URL for it and put it up later. Yeah, we'll put it uh, below the video, but can we get it on Amazon or is that just- No, you, no you can and it's, a, it's an exclusive. Um, Knott's actually paid our publisher to come up with an 100th anniversary Oh, version. So of course we we finished that in 2019 before the pandemic, and um, yeah, and so but I was just gonna say I I remember when you know I first started working on this um, I'm gonna say probably 2006 or 2007 I had uh, I had Eric over to the house I was living in at the time talking about this. This before he was even a co-author. I was just like, I needed someone like, well, I was drowning in images and I was just like, I needed someone to like kind of help me separate the wheat from the chaff, which Eric is really good at. Um, but I remember telling him that, you know, I really want this book, you know, of course we're gonna have amazing photos, but I really wanna focus on the art because I feel like the artists in a lot of theme park uh, history books get short shrift, maybe not in Disney books, 
necessarily, but this one for sure. And so we, you know, we definitely wanted to bring things like the, all the Paul von Kleben artwork, which most people, if they had seen, they didn't know what they were seeing. Um, uh -huh. He really was the first art director of Ghost Town. Um, so, and, and every book I, I work on really pushes the concept art because that's what I do um, is conceptual artwork. So I, I think it's really important to share that with people, especially things that people haven't generally seen. Right. Well, you definitely have an eye for it. And we're gonna look at some of your artwork too. Um, amazing, oh, right, which yes. I've, I've seen forever on, on social media, but I never realized it was you, it was you who did it. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like well, in, in awe of that. Things take on a life of their own. This is going is way back. Claude, is that right. one of the Claude Bell maps? I think that, yeah, I think that's one of the Claude Bell, in the corner it'll say, by Bell. What uh, blows me away about this art is just the fact that the, that trolley car had that track. And I'm just so cool. beyond fascinated with like, okay, there was a little like barn where they kept it. And I kept wondering, I'm like, well, is that the barn that's right next to Montezuma's where there's the Camp Snoopy train? Like, this is the kind of history that blows my mind. And uh, turns out I am completely floored by theme park, ancient ruins. And I don't know any place that has it more than Knott's Berry Farm. Oh, it's so true. There are so many, so many buildings around Knott's Berry Farm that were affected by that trolley and are still like not quite square. Because oh yeah, the yeah. You can see like the close. path of it. it mm, I always kind of yeah. look for like the trolley tracks too. I know they're long gone, but by the cable car restaurant, I'm like, I look at the asphalt for a little bit. Yeah, but you can kind of see that there's like a bump under the asphalt. <laughs> exactly. The, I'm like, you know, it's yeah. still there. <laughs> this map's fascinating too because it's obviously you know ghost town and they've expanded into Fiesta Village, but there's no log ride. There's no um, mine train yet. Just well, and for those for for your viewers who don't know, Claude Bell who drew this map, he's actually there's not a lot of artwork by him for knots. Um, he's best known for sculpting the characters you see on the benches, like, um, I'm going to say their names wrong, but Whis Whiskey Jim and Handsome Brady. Did I say that right, Eric? <laughs> no, uh, no, Handsome, Handsome, Handsome Brady, Handsome and, Brady Whiskey and Whiskey Jim. Bill. Whiskey, Whiskey Bill. Bill. It's been Jim. It's I, 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 yeah. yeah, he was Whiskey Jim for a little while. Uh, Right. Knott's Berry Farm just put out a Department 56 miniature of those two guys sitting on a bench. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that they say Whiskey Jim in there. I'm like, darn it. Ah. So did he also it's, sculpt it's, uh, um, Seldom Seen Slim? Uh, yes, that was one of his, Seldom yeah. Seen Slim and the Burrow. In fact, all of the Seldom Seen Slims, plural, he did those. Yeah, there's multiple versions of them in different sizes and different times. And there was even one out... Um, out in Cabazon, you know, his retirement project, for those of you who don't know, in the 70s was doing the dinosaurs out in Cabazon. Uh, you've seen famously in the Pee Wee Herman movie. Yeah, that's where everyone knows it from. Uh, but there actually, there used to be a restaurant, or I don't know if there still is a restaurant attached. Wheel Inn, right? To it. Yeah, the Wheel Inn. Mm -hmm. And he was part owner of that too. And there was a seldom seen slim outside that restaurant for many years too. It's funny how many there, there were, because I just saw the one in the real Calico out on the way to Vegas. And yeah. I'm like, collect them yeah. all. Yeah. Right, yep. Yep. So here's another one. This one is obviously a few years later. Um, we're kind of skipping through because we got a hundred years yeah. to cover, but obviously we have the log right here. We have Calico Mine Train and we have Gypsy Camp. So you know that this is from a certain year, right? Yeah. Very limited. But, yeah. Yeah. So this is like 73, Eric, would you say? I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for something, uh, something else that might give us a clue. I mean, it's it's what 70 71 72 73 mm -hmm. very very limited and i don't think we don't know who the i mean the, the next person to do these fun maps is bob bates but do we know who the artist is on this one i kind no, of on this that. one uh paul I, baker I, I, paul baker paul baker good i'm glad it's signed not all of them are signed in fact the uh the bob bates ones uh his family told me that he wasn't allowed to sign his work so he wound up sneaking it into the fun map <laughs> like he, he signed the he signed the posters but the fun map he was my kind of artist no. but Weird. when i finally went in and i blew that map up huge in order to make a, a wall mural oh. out of it for virginia's gift shop i wound up looking into the pan for gold and he snuck his name into the rock work for pan for gold wow by the way if i could just blow smoke up eric's skirt for a minute uh, all of you should go <laughs> to uh, Virginia's gift shop and see this amazing timeline mural that Eric designed that wraps the back walls of the back half of the store. It tells the story of Knott's 
a hundred plus years, you know, or a hundred years of knots, you know, just in graphics and photos and artwork and fun maps. And it's really, really cool. I should have known you were responsible for Thank that. You. I love that. Eric, Eric designed that. He also, you, you designed the, uh, the ghost town grill menu, right? Eric's yeah, designed a lot of stuff you've seen at, at the farm, actually. Just such a good throwback. That map, speaking of that map, let's look at that map right here. Nothing screams Knott's Berry Farm more than this style, you know, and especially when you did the just focusing in on the Calico uh, as a real town. And I think that's what's so special about it. And even more so with Ghost Town Alive, it's like they live there. Like it's a real city. Uh, it just it just blows me away. Yeah, I, I give a lot of credit to I mean, all credit is, for, is goes to Art of Truhan for this beautiful design. And uh, in order to make the placemat for uh, the ghost town grill i took bits and pieces of this exact map and tried to create that that village but the weird part about uh, ghost town is that there's real real history i think that's one of the things i love about Knott's Berry farm is that there's real history and then there's the mythology and the fake history so in doing the history of ghost town on that placemat for ghost town grill i had to find a way to balance the tall tales and legends with the absolute real fact of how impressive this American historical location is. That's a, it's a fine line. It's very difficult. Some people are so used to the other theme parks, they think everything in Knott's Berry Farm is fake. But I'm like, nope, there's some real stuff out in that ghost town. Oh, that's incredible. And I think everyone on this map, map it's making me sad seeing the, the Church of the Reflections and the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, uh, the little church too. What was that one? That the, yeah, the, chap the chapel of the Transfiguration, which is Paul von Kleben's very first attraction. He does in. Yeah. In I think I still have nightmares from seeing that painting in the dark as a kid, going, "What is going on?" Like I'm on a field trip, watching yeah. this, but it's just it's still so cool, so memorable. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow, I was that geeky teenager who wound up getting a, a pass to Knott's Berry Farm and basically asked, "Can you open that for me so I can see it?" And then they did. So I was like oh, alone cool. in this smelly, musty, old, dark oh, it's room. terrifying. The yeah. doors oh, open and I'm like. I can still smell it. <laughs> it was like, this is my childhood. I appreciate this. I love it. This isn't a traditional map, but, you know, I, yeah. when I saw it in your collection and it just brings me so much joy to look at. And it just feels yeah. like such a fun place. And it, you can really, it highlights the stuff across the street. You know, yeah, we were talking a little bit about oh, yeah. how yeah, cool that lake Island was. And the, yeah. the, the, Cord the Cordelia Cay and the oh. lake and the train that went around it. I just miss that so much. I, you know, I, it was, it was a cheap way for my mom to bring me and my brother somewhere in the summer in the 70s. Yeah. You could go, you could park, you know, and you could have a picnic for free. You could go through Independence Hall. And it was just as good as visiting knots. Like I left being well, a happy it was, camper. It was like pseudo visiting knots. I remember my, one of my first souvenir guidebooks I bought in the gift shop at Independence Hall, which is dog-eared and falling apart. But but and then sometimes you know your parents would pony up and pay to let you go through Jungle Island or ride you know some of Bud Hurlbut's concessions over there. Um, I really miss that. It's it was it was really sweet. Chris, I'm going to interrupt you. Look at that image right now. You see the Jungle Island? You see the, the, the donkeys in there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the yeah. That oh, was yeah. such a, sh that was so short lived. That um, was. I've got photos of, the, of me riding those somewhere. <laughs> in the because of Gypsy Camp and the Roaring Twenties, they, the mules right. got uh, pushed out of Ghost Town. Right. They had to go right. somewhere. Oh so they goodness. went went over to the lagoon for a short time. I never realized they were in this map. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is a good map. I mean, these are just ads, really, for oh, like yeah. to get uh, these. Are, these are the these are those pamphlets that you would get at the you know the Holiday Inn or something with the you right. see like a rack. Well, that adventure is all the attractions. I remember the, yeah. seeing this thing as a kid, and it just to me that oh, was like yeah. That was like the American Express if you're if you were like a twelve year old. Like, oh, I I'm an adventurers club. But just this artwork, yep. I think it captures the vibe. Um, Knott's has been through so much. There's obviously ups and downs with the park, but like this is just heyday. Mm. Like this just it's looks true. incredible. And look at that Fiesta Village boat ride over there that never existed. Isn't that great? I was trying to figure <laughs> out what that was. Oh, those are Eric. Those are the boats that that were landlocked that sat right out front. Exactly. Those little, those, little look, those little dining ones. Yeah. But it looks like a nice little like jungle a cruise that they put yeah. in there. And Cloud Nine, the 
when I was a kid, like I was too, I was too young to enjoy Cloud Nine and Studio K, but I knew those places were happening. Oh man, what? Studio like Studio K, you know, it's like you'd go to Videopolis at Disneyland, and it was pretty safe, and you like there was some danger at Studio K. Like, <laughs> That's there what's was, fun. And they were also like playing the goth K Rocky type stuff. They weren't playing Kiss FM type stuff that like they played at Videopolis. And of course, here's the the motorcycles, the pre soapbox. Oh yeah, death defying. Yeah, and that that loop loop trainer worked for me. I never did ride the motorcycle chase that I recall, but the loop trainer was uh, it, it true to the name. It was what got me onto Montezuma's Revenge. Yeah, there's that Whittles. <laughs> oh my gosh. Speaking of Whittles, this art's pretty cool too. And there's just like a cool way of the way they collaged all the different lands and stuff. Like. Yeah. I always have the conversation. I'll ask people that are kind of new to knots, like, what do you think the theme is? Like, if you've never really kind of grown up with it, what's the theme? You know, they could say cowboy or whatever, you know, but like the old time adventures tagline really kind of grounded me in what it is. But it, to me, it's almost like the best of the West in a way. I know Independence yeah. Hall throws that away, but you have, you know, the Fiesta Village, you have Ghost Town, obviously, Roaring Twenties, that could be kind of like a, well, Charleston, is that a little East Coast? But what would you well, say, how always, would you describe it? Like if you if you were to describe would, knots. I would describe knots as a California adventure. How funny. Blunt what a good idea for a theme park. What a great idea for a theme park. I wonder if somebody would copy that idea. <laughs> um, I would knots Berry Farm has always been a, celebrating Southern California. Even over in Fiesta Village, it's kind of like uh, it, it's Mexico, but it's it's Mexico's influence on California with yeah, uh, the definitely. Mission trails. Oh, there Street. California missions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when that opened about 1969, uh, it was uh, on Alvera Street for Orange County. And so they could experience that piece of California history in the West. I mean, Walter Knott looked at the Wild West and created something that was a tribute to the pioneers who came to California. Uh, the gold miners, of course, who came to California, the logging people who were working in California. And then Fiesta Village came about. It was Mexico, yes, but it was Mexico and its effect on Southern California. It's almost like uh, the land of Zorro. Um, and there's all the mission trails to teach kids about California history with all of the, the models of the California missions. And then there's the Roaring Twenties, which was uh, built and designed with, uh, with Virginia, Marion and Tony, Russell Knott specifically to honor their parents, Walter and Cordelia, who came to Buena Park in 1920. There's uh, a lot of Southern California, California history wrapped up in Knott's Berry Farm. So to me, it is the California Adventure Park. Well said. And especially with the Fiesta Village part, like what a huge part of California that's missing from California Adventure. You think there'd be a section of that. I mean, if you're going to be inspired by it, it's funny to leave that part out. I want to mention this this drawing of Whittles, and I think he did the rest of the artwork on this flyer too, is by a cartoonist named uh, Pete Winters, I believe. And he was a uh, cartoonist uh, out of Laguna Beach, if I have it right in my brain, which I may not, some beach town in Southern California. But anyway, he, he did the original drawings of Whittles, and I really, I'm a big fan of his ink line. Oh, he yeah. has a really interesting, I always like thin and thick. Uh, but there's also there's angular bits to it. So if you look at that that Whittles drawing, and he he did a bunch of the original Whittles designs, which of course did not translate at all to the actual original Whittles walk around character, which was a little terrible. different. Yeah, that's, maybe yeah. that's why he didn't yeah. last too long. But yeah. the the artwork of him is great, and you can still see him in a few places. I mean, besides walking around knots now, but like I, there's a little bit of him in Fiesta Village. Or, I'm just glad that he's kind of coming back, and I'm sure the artist family really appreciates seeing that thing that guy pop up again so this piece is incredible oh, and this yeah, is what is this beautiful. what you use for the cover of the book the new edition the new, new edition yeah. i mean it's it's the perfect choice yeah really sets the vibe for the whole park this is very welcoming very folksy well what's interesting is that's yeah there you go it's a photo it's a photo of dude sands who was known as the park greeter for for many years uh late 40s, early 50s. And so I don't know if Paul von Cleven took this photo himself or not, but he certainly obviously used it as a basis for that concept art. And that concept art um, can be seen on several souvenir guidebooks. In fact, I think it was done specifically for the cover of one of the 
the souvenir guidebooks. Interesting. This one is absolutely this spectacular is beautiful. too. Beautiful. What's the story that behind this is one? Mind blowing. Paul von Cleveland again. It's Main Street. Yep. And it is the original street of Ghost Town in 1941 from the Gold Trails Hotel, the SA office on the left, all the way down Main Street, down the street. Uh, that's, that's all of Ghost Town that existed in 1941. Blacksmith yeah, shop. You know how hard it is for me to walk into Knott's and not go down this street? Like, I, it, I have kids dragging me to go to Camp Snoopy first, and I'm like, no, we're going yeah. to Ghost Town. Did you know it was named Main Street? No, but it makes sense. It is also my during, it is. during Not Scary Farm. It's my favorite place to hang out. That's for sure. <laughs> it's Fog Alley. Yeah, we got a lot. We, we could do a whole show on Not Scary Farm for sure. But thankfully, they still have that painting. It's in uh, the Chicken Dinner Restaurant for display. Oh, the yeah. original. Oh, the original wow. is in the Chicken Dinner. Yeah. So this is something cool too. And I've always noticed this building how it has like the cactus and stuff growing up on the roof. You know, those, those little little details that just makes it feel like you're really out in the desert. Paul von Cleveland was was great. He was, you know, he was a self-taught uh, designer. He was uh, born Austrian, but he was very, very heavily influenced by the history of the Old West. And he really was, he's not the first art director of Ghost Town, that, that goes to Paul Schwartz, but he certainly was the first art director of Ghost Town that, that really shaped the buildings as we know them today. And uh, I just these elevations that he did, and these designs uh, for these buildings are, are just gorgeous, R really amazing stuff. So I just love seeing the sketches of them and then how you have the photos of what they what they ended up looking like. That's just. Yeah. And one thing that's always stood out to me. Yeah. Like that photo is is great because that's they built it as Paul designed it you know, not forgetting the fact that this is supposed to be a, a ghost town. It's supposed to look dilapidated and forlorn and left out in the sun to decompose. And unfortunately, somewhere, someone along the way decided to finish all that off neatly. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so, a, it, it was a boom. It was a boom town gone bust. And that's, that's the way I, I kind of phrase it. And the, the fact that these buildings are falling over, I mean, Chris, we were talking about this earlier, look at the weight of the roof as it's collapsing yep. on the ghost <laughs> yeah. bar. Yeah. Everything yeah. seems to have so much uh, a heavy air to it. It's really and, it and Paul von Klebe, Paul von Klebe did not forget to include the weeds growing in corners of his illustrations. Wow. Uh, I, I dig that as well. So this, this is something that never happened, but it was designed, right? Do you know where this was supposed to go? This was never realized. This is this is this ghost bar. We we I don't know if we included it or not, but there's there's plan views of the inside. It, it was basically to me, yeah. There, that's they, they had this tableau that was going to basically be. I believe it was going to be a black light gag, not a Pepper's Ghost gag, where it looked like there was riders on the storm, these desert ghosts riding across the the prairie. Um, but it, if you can imagine it, it, it probably would have uh, looked similar in tone to how the Covered Wagon Show tableau mm -hmm. was, uh, but this was never realized. I, I, I personally feel this is like primordial uh, uh, Calico Saloon, but you can see where, where the windmill was, you know, it was probably going to be about where the barn is today. I can see that. You know, if, if they were to redo this, this could really have a cool Trader Sam's type of hangout in the Calico. Like maybe someday this will come back. Yeah. Good ideas oh, never die. I would love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the colors are, are gorgeous. We're, we're lucky to, to have these. And, you know, the, the, it looks like they were done yesterday. Oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is uh, Dave Shipman art for the uh, Bud Hurlbutt's log ride. And Dave Shipman was an artist who was very enamored with trains and things, but he was kind of Bud's on staff uh, artist who did everything from conceptual renderings to him to the filigree and the rose mauling you see like on the, um, on the, uh, the Mexican, uh, the hat, uh, oh gosh, I'm the butchering the name. Ride. The sombrero ride, thank mm -hmm. you. All the little beautiful florals and the rose mauling and things you see on that. He, he did all that stuff by hand. That was the same artist. Yeah, Dave wow. Shipman. Yeah. Well, and it turned out pretty accurate to this. You know, that, that POV close. is there. Pretty close, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't draw pretty Supreme long. Scream up in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that water tank over on the left, darn it. I'd like to see that come back. Me too. Oh, yeah. 
It's so fun. Beautiful. Look at that deer head. Yeah. You know, and he's, 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 I'm going to say he's not a great artist, right? He's not, he's not, there's, there's not like a really great, amazing style to this, but he gets the job done. And he, you know, he, he shows you, he shows you what you need to see. Now here's a Bob Bates. So they, so they, so Eric, they let him sign the posters, but not the fun map. Was that it? Yeah, that's what his, that's what his wife told me when we met okay. that, um, he was able to do his name here, but on the map, no, for some reason, mm. which really surprises me. I would have thought it would be the opposite. Mm. This is one of my favorites. And in, in fact, the first time I actually knew Knott's had attraction posters was from that wall in Virginia's gift shop. So thank you for including yeah. it. Yeah. And then part of the hundredth, oh. they're actually selling these again. They're only 10 bucks each. So well, it's I, great. I, I literally had PTSD. To, I could not pick which ones I wanted. Used to sell, they used to sell them in the early 80s. And the big flabbergasting thing behind that is they, they never did a Knott's Berry Tales one. They did a Wacky Soapbox Racers one, but they never did a Berry Tales one. Yeah, they're, they're all in pretty the cool. The, the, the parachutes one is, is great too. But when I, yeah, when I purchased yeah. four of them, I, I narrowed it down to four. I made, them, <laughs> made sure they were all Ghost Town ones. So but Knott's paved the way for like theme parks in general. But this attraction specifically inspired so much even over at disneyland mm. oh it's still it, it inspired so, everything it's okay. so good still i'm gonna say <clears throat> let's start with the queue the yeah. uh, if you if you don't mind i really think that uh, the queue is incredible that that line that hidden switchback queue that takes you past a ticket booth underneath the railroad trestle by a small lake past a waterfall then a and river water running down the whole way too you know what I mean? Yeah, and, I didn't realize since it, I, until I had kids that the water's right there. There's no railing. There's no nothing. It's just, just don't fall on it. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And it, it, it's all one big circuit circuit loop of water. And um, Bud Hurlbut and his crew designed and built this massive mount, a seven story tall mount. But he accidentally invented the hidden theme switchback queue. Did you know that? No, I didn't he, realize that. Um, well, look at Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. I mean, one of the best queues ever. You walk mm -hmm. in and you have no idea where you're going, how far the line is, when you're going to board your seat. You have no clue. Uh, and it's the same thing with this one in a way. You, you walk in and you're not sure where you're going. You're on a path. You're experiencing a themed environment before boarding the ride. Now, before this attraction in 1960, it was just switchbacks of, of metal metal switchback metal switchback the Awful. lines that, that's and not fun. There's, there's no adventure there not at all bud hurlbut built this gigantic mountain and put the loading zone halfway up the top on purpose in order to like use gravity to take his train go uh, take his train down so you start instead of starting in the in the middle or starting at the bottom and going up because you're going into a line he had to start the train in the middle and go down so the train starts in the middle of the mountain and, and then descends and descends and descends. And that mountain is a 360 degree completely themed attraction, 360 degree. You can look up, you can look down behind you. It's not like an omni mover where you're focused on one thing, don't look back. It is all around you. It has fooled so many people who think that it's a real mountain because it is so massively wildly like environmental. So moving on to Roaring Twenties, right. the good segue is, you know, it, I just trip out when I'm in Roaring Twenties or, you know, bo boardwalk now, but like, I, it's still Roaring Twenties to me. When you look at the back of the mine train and just to imagine all that is inside that building, I can't believe it. Yeah, it's massive. They really, it's, it's ridiculous. A, you, you think about the attractions and the size and the scope of the attractions that Walt Disney was designing at the same time as the Calico Mine Ride. 1960 nature's wonderland the, the the year before submarine voyage and he's got you know his whole team at wed and imagineering designing these things spending you know millions of dollars and then here you've got bud hurlbut doing the calico mine train something that is commensurate with what walt disney is doing basically doing it on his own designing it on his yeah. own and hiring his own contractors and getting it done without the huge studio yeah. right un, un flipping believable and and he freaking invents the hidden switchback queue, which is <laughs> yes. an insane theme park staple. I mean, it's just, Bud Hurlbut is amazing. Hey, Chris, yeah. do you know the artist of this one? <laughs> mm. Yeah, some, some hack. Mm. 
This is incredible. Like, yeah. So these, so these, I did four of these. These, this is the this is the the predecessor to the um, Knott's Preserved book. I had in like 1992 or 1993, I had one more class to do at CalArts to get my degree. And um, I decide, I said, can I write a history paper? So I wrote this paper on the history of the Roaring Twenties area. area. That's kind of how I started with this. And um, I wanted it to be on the, the Roaring Twenties and the airfield, m mostly Knott's Berry Tales, but, but also wacky soapbox racers and everything. And so I did these fun maps in Sam McKim's style as, as part of it. And um, yeah, so that's, what, that's where those are from. Um, and someday you'll put some color on some of them. Uh, you know, Eric and I talked about how maybe we can do a Knott's Berry Tales poster with the, the one I did, but it's just my love letter to it. It's just, you know, in the early nineties, so much of the stuff was lost and the little bit that was still there was fading fast. And I just felt like this need to get it down on paper, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so much heart poured, poured into all those drawings. It's Thanks. Just, and it, you know, it does have that Sam McKim vibe. So you, you nailed it there. Yeah, well, I'm heavily influenced, you know, by him um, and Mark Davis and a lot of other people. But in terms of the fun map, the art of the fun map, I don't, you can't get any better than Sam McKim, so. Speaking of fun and wackiness, I think we should talk about the wacky soapbox racers. Yeah. One of, another one of my earliest memories of Knott's Berry Farm too. Yeah. It just, I can't believe how fun it was. Yeah. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Sato's yeah. a genius. What, what are you yeah. gonna say? Eddie Sato's a genius and yeah. this was wonderful. And, you know, I, I kind of am at a loss for words at how, how fun the original version of this attraction was before they started tearing out all the sets. Uh, then, oh, it, yeah. then it kind of yeah. the sad track by itself, but the original sets yeah. and the show, mm -hmm. chef's kiss, man. Yeah. I so remember all of those banging doors when you would ride and then you'd burst through a door and burst through a door and then burst through another door uh, when they had smoke effects and uh, the sound effects. But mm -hmm. I think that it was just a sign of, sign of the era Dots Berry Farm didn't want to spend money on set maintenance so they just decided to throw away the sets instead of repaint them oh. it, it was truly heartbreaking as as we watched that attraction just fade just totally well, and, I, and i don't know if this is accurate or just a rumor or whatnot but i remember hearing it that like you would hear every every other year or something like oh they're gonna rip out wacky soapbox racers and i think maybe i'm wrong i'm just guessing but i'm thinking if that was the case they went in and started ripping some of the set work out. And then at the last second, someone gave it a reprieve, said, oh, the hourly capacity is too high. We have to keep this here. And so, but in its last few years, it was just basically a track with minimal to, to no set work, um, yeah. which was really sad to see, to be honest. We're skipping Berry Tales. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. Oh, oh my God. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was I so loved cool. It. I, and honestly, I didn't want to love Kingdom of the Dinosaurs because I'm a Berry Tales kid. That was my That's ride. how good it was. It means like, but okay, they, it was a worthy successor. Yeah, and then KOD opened. And of course, like Berry Tales, I rode KOD over and over and over again because yeah. the sound, the smell, the heat, the air conditioning. It was, it was a Disney quality ride. And as far as dark the, rides the go. Sound, the soundtrack was done by a man named Kevin Nadow. And that soundtrack really stuck with you too. There was something mm -hmm. really ethereal and otherworldly and, and hauntingly beautiful. Um, especially at the end where there was this kind of death knell for the dinosaurs. I, I was really, oh, this is interesting. You're showing Robin Halls. This is the original version of the, of the professor, you know, who everyone remembers goes, you know, my time machine, you, you've turned <laughs> off my time machine. Oh no. But it originally was a cleaning lady. And yeah, yeah. I was she going to say, can you do an impression of that? No, I can't. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they actually built the cleaning lady. And I think it just looked so off that they turned it into a, into a professor. You'd have to, you'd have to ask Robin Hall for the real, these are all sketches by Robin Hall mostly. Oh, which great. Again, I'm a big fan of Robin's yeah. concept artwork. Uh, you, you see how well he designs and draws. So I've always been mixed about uh, Kingdom of the Dinosaurs because it took away my beloved Knott's Berry Tales. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Segway. I, I do have a love for it. So, Chris, were you there those, op those opening months when Kingdom of the Dinosaurs still smelled like boysenberries? 
<laughs> I don't no remember way. that. I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure yeah. I was. I just, I'll just, I'll never forget. I, I had borrowed, we didn't have a video camera. This is like 1986. Yeah. And we went to Knott's for the day and I borrowed my grandfather's video camera. I said, I'm going to videotape Knott's Berry Tales. And gosh darn it, I, I went to the front of the park and I said, what's that big dinosaur foot sticking out of a crate? And, oh. and found out that, that Berry Tales was shut down. Oh. And that's happened to a lot of people. Someone was talking on, on social media the other day about, oh, I think it was Ken Pellman saying, how he went to, to videotape or to ride Adventure Through Inner Space and it had just been shut down for Star Tours. Like he missed it by like this much. That hurts. Yeah. Well, at least with Kingdom of the Dinosaurs, it, it didn't leave Berry Tales closed for like a decade. Right. You know what I mean? Like when not when right. KOD closed, there was a lot of time between what yeah. followed it, which we don't yeah. even need to go to if we're talking about things about 100 years of knots. But yeah. what followed that was bringing back the classic. So perfect segue. Fairy Tales is back as part of the 100th anniversary of Knots. And like you said, it's one of those things where you never thought you'd be able to go back in time and right. see it. And when I took my kid, I didn't know what to expect. I, you know, I have three little ones. And my son was so excited about Fairy Tales. And that was so weird to like have his excitement equal my nostalgia level, which is through the wow. roof. And I'm like, Knots hit a home run with this. This is perfect. I, I, I love it. You know, they, you know, and I think... I'd always been afraid that, okay, if they're going to do this, if they're going to bring it back, I'm really terrified they're going to do a really substandard version of it because not just to be blunt does not have the budgets that, that Disney and other major corp and universal have. And when the word came down that it was basically going to be, um, you know, a, a, a basically the, the same sort of conveyance and the same sort of mechanism that the iron reef ride had, which is with screens, I was just, I was very concerned. Um, but but I, I think Eric would agree with me. We we got a little sneak peek of it last year and um, we were really, really pleased with what they did because not only do the screens work but they built so much more show set. I mean, that's one of the weird things about COVID. They added so much more set detail and show set elements uh, to this ride than they ever would have if they'd had to open in, in summer 2020 it really, really works. And I think it really, it, it hits, it hits all the beats it needs to hit in terms of generations of people. Because if you try to recreate Knott's Berry Tales as it originally was, uh, with just a slow moving dark ride with, with sets, basically a fantasy land kind of dark ride. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't um, work today. It wouldn't have resonated as well today as it did. Sure. And what was really wonderful about it too is how closely they, both the team at Knott's and the team at Trio Tech worked with uh, Chris Crump, who basically got them all of Rolly's artwork uh, to, you know, make sure that they they hewed as close as they could to that original um, that original look. So yeah, so you're showing the cover to our book. Yeah, so. this sounds like it'd make a really nice book. Yeah, so so Eric and I have been working, um, you know, all last year. We we decided, and with uh, Albert Rodriguez, who's probably the world's biggest Knott's Berry Tales fan. Uh, that we wanted to do a book on Knott's Berry Tales, really getting into the, the detail we can't in the Knott's Preserved book, telling the entire story of the attraction, all the way from its beginnings, all the way through to the, the new version of it today. So uh, we're still working on it. I'm horribly behind on my writing, which is awful, but um, no it's a really interesting story. And yeah, you're showing some of Rolly's original artwork for the 1975 version of the ride, which is crump unleashed right like i just i love Rolly's artwork his line is so good his colors are bananas uh it's yeah. really really cool so and and we we've gone back and we've cleaned up a lot of this artwork some of it we were able to track down some of the originals but a lot of it is just gone and so what we have are these slides and we've gone back in and cleaned up a lot of these slides it just it doesn't seem like a very short ride and i know part of it became q with iron reef and yeah. since it kept the same track of that it doesn't feel like a short ride. It just, it, the, all like the actual sets that are in there. That's another thing I was, I was nervous about. Cause I, I, I agree not might not have the budget to do like to add a bunch of stuff in it, but I was right. nervous and I'm like, please just tell me there's some practical sets. I need something else. Well, they, they use the downtime in COVID to really plus it out. I mean, they built like, you know, a small version of the chugga chug machine. And there, there's, I mean, the gypsy wagons, uh, it's, it's you know, it. even, even if you get a chance when you ride it again, look at the foliage up in the, up in the roof. Yeah, there's Rolly. 
with uh, with my frog. So yeah, so we we were able to spend you know uh, time with him, socially distanced, of course, but you know. And then we, we've done interviews and talked with him a lot over the years. The, the, the great thing for me was tracking down a lot of the people who worked on it who I'd never talked to before. Oh, great. So this book is going to tell the, the entire story and a lot of early 70s really crump design that maybe people haven't seen before for other parks. Things that well, didn't it's so familiar that like you may not know yeah. him as an artist, but you definitely know his work. And especially if you grew up going to theme parks around here. Sure. This is a really special well, ride and just to have that kind of throwback. And there's yeah. still a lot of his art like influence in this new ride too, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris, I think we're you're you're going way back in the history of Berry Tales, taking it all the way back to Gypsy Camp and, and it's it's yeah. it's confusing origins when uh right. Mary and Knott couldn't fi couldn't figure out what she wanted, a western ride, a gypsy ride, a twenties ride. There's so a story all these right there. Weird aspects wound up uh, falling in line. Yeah, and for a time it was all, it was going to be human characters and then they all anthropomorphized into animal characters. Yeah. Well, it explains too why even like, like there is a gypsy flair to Berry Tales. You know, a lot of that kind of stayed on yeah. a little bit. The other thing yeah. to know about Berry Tales is it had the same brutal, unreasonable schedule that It's a Small World had, which <laughs> Rolly, of course, worked on as well. They basically went from blue sky concept art to opening the ride in nine months, which is bananas. It's, it's completely bananas. Crazy. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not, yeah. So there's, there's a talk there's about my, the fire. Like uh, that's part of history. I don't really understand. So the fire, so the fire they're, they're going through production. They started in fall of 1974. They wanted to open by Memorial day of 1975. And of course the rest of the roaring twenties is being built around it. Long story short, um, they, they brought in union people to do some of the uh, construction on the inside of the dark ride. And uh, they didn't, of course, this is, this is Rolly Crump's opinion, okay? But they did not, they did not like that Knott's is non-union. And people talked about, I'm not sure we should have union guys working with non-union guys. And so the, the rumor, the assumption is that, that someone was disgruntled and lit the place up. Yeah, so basically with like a couple of months to go now, unfortunately, most of the set pieces and, and all of the characters uh, were not in the building when it, when it was set on fire, but uh, the chug-a-chug -chug machine was. So Chris Crump had to like in six weeks completely make a whole new chug-a-chug -chug machine. Uh, but yeah, they, I mean, it set them back. Like actually Knott's Berry Tales did not open with the rest of the Roaring Twenties. So people could see it up there on that upper level, but it was not. Well, was that building there for Gypsy Camp? Yes. Yes. So, and, and to your thing before about the, the second story, uh, the reason that that's up on the second story is because the arcade below in the Gypsy Camp days made so much money uh, <laughs> for, for knots. They said, you can't touch that. And Someone's got to pay for this. Yeah, because Rolly was like, why are, you, why, are, why are you making me put this right up on the second story? No one's going to know it's up here. And it's like, yeah, you can't touch the arcade. That's a big moneymaker. Yeah. Well, that, it's another cool thing that they had that they were supposed to be red cars, right? Going back to Knott's yeah. history. And I read somewhere yeah. that it had, used to have a roof to it as well. They well, they were going to have a They're roof, going to, okay. but it wasn't. It, it didn't come. It, it, yeah. it, Chris, do you know if that was even built? I don't think that they even... No, it wasn't, it wasn't built. A gentleman named uh, Dave Ruttero uh, did the designs of the vehicles and he talked Rolly into making it a little trolley car and originally he wanted the trolley car to, to have a roof to it and Rolly said you can't do that you're going to block everything that we want to show them you know because there's so much to look at you know uh, up high uh, too in terms of the artificial foliage and then the fair scene at the end with the big balloon going up and down um, so it is actually that, that's another thing that Knott's Berry Tales has done that's different most dark rides they don't want you looking up. Everything kind of fades to black at a certain level. Uh, Knott's Berry Tales, the sets and everything went all the way up. It was it was pretty innovative for its time. Well, that's another good segue to just, you know, obviously there's a lot of passion with Berry Tales. There's a lot of passion with Knott's Berry Farm. You know, to sum it all up, like how would you describe like basically like your love for Knott's Berry Farm? Like what makes Knott's so special to you is I guess what I'm trying to say. How do you answer that, right, Eric? Right, it's tough. Um, I think it's time for an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I 
I've known Knoxbury Farm all my life. I'm a Southern California kid. And while I have said, you know, Disneyland can go to the tourists, I <laughs> like Disneyland, but it's for the tourists. Southern California has Knott's Berry Farm and it belongs to us. It's our park. And I've always felt uh, that it's something that I, I can have a, a hand in or a fingerprint in. And, and since I've been working for Knott's Berry Farm off and on, and I'm still a freelancer for Knott's Berry Farm today, um, I'm really happy to say that I, I, I feel like I've been able to give back to Knott's Berry Farm. They've given me so much inspiration, life, color, amusement, a love of neon, for example. <laughs> And I, 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 I give back to them in, in, in every way that I can, because I appreciate Knott's Berry Farm as being something that a family made, and I want to be part of that family. Well, I think it was really important for Eric and I, too, to, to get the Knott's Preserve book out, because at that time, no one else was preserving that history. No one else was, was getting that, you know, doing the work of getting that history down and, and, I feel like that was, I feel very fortunate and I feel like we were able to, I know it's preserved as in the title, but we were able to preserve something. It was a genius that, title. That, that they may have not, well, you can actually thank Bruce Gordon for that title. Oh, awesome. uh, Bruce Gordon from those of you who know about the nickel tour, Bruce's mm -hmm. work at Imagineering. <laughs> Bruce helped out a lot with a lot of archiving and scanning material and was a champion of this book before he passed away. And he, he came up with the title, basically, which is a terrible pun, but, but kind of works too. I, you know, we grew up with it. You know, I mean, I, I can't remember a time when I wasn't going to Knott's with my family, just like with Disneyland. Um, it's a part of me, it's a part of my childhood. So to be able to, to do some of the work of preserving it and still go today, I, I still love going. I've got an annual pass. I mean, it's, it's, it means something deep and special to me. I'm not sure I can put it into words, but it means yeah. a lot to me. Kind of like how you just said too about how, you know, we've grown up with it. My parents grew up with it. You know, I've, I've heard stories mm -hmm. of when yeah. my mom would be, my mom would go there with her parents and her sisters. And I'm like, th that we actually found some really old footage when they were like kids going around knots and ghost town. I'm like, that's exactly what I do with my kids. I'm just shooting with my phone instead. You know, it's like yeah. the, the legacy and it's generational now. And it's just kind of yeah. like, planting the seeds no pun intended but like it's the the kiddos are, are gonna my kiddos are gonna feel the same way i do i think but just yeah. growing up with it loving it they'll say you know they'll ask to go to knots all the time and yeah it's a special place for yeah, sure there's a photo in in our book of of my father with my grandmother in the late 1940s in the parking lot at knots and my dad's got his full cowboy outfit on and my grandmother has this ridiculous giant sunflower brooch um <laughs> But uh, it's it 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 feels like my family's history to me. Just it's a, I think a lot of it's people a family. Remember, it's a family reunion for the hundredth anniversary. It's kind <laughs> it of a, it, it's an appropriate title. For, uh, I mean, yeah, my, say, my it, great grandparents went to Knott's Berry Farm, and it, uh, I was talking to somebody at, at Knott's the other day, um, Alan Palavec. His oh. family has worked at Knott's Berry Farm for seventy years. Wow. He's, they've had they've had a member of their family working at Knox for 70 years and it's just amazing to me wow one memory that really like stands out too is like you know you think about like the memories my parents have or memories I've made with my parents and now with my kids before my dad passed away it was his 80th birthday and he was already kind of like up there obviously but his 80th birthday the one thing he was determined to do is he's like I'm gonna go ride Ghost Rider and I'm mm. like are you crazy I mean the guy was in the Air Force he's he's hardcore he's badass like yeah. yeah let's go to let's go to ride ghost rider i knew how that was before the remodel of it so i knew how rough it was mm -hmm. let's do it so he this 80 year old man gets in ghost rider and all the workers are like sir are you sure and he's <laughs> like yeah i'm sure let's do this and um we go on the ride and you know his teeth are rattling and it's it's his, it's ghost rider and wow. when, he, when he gets off the first thing he says is i swear that thing has square wheels and I'm like, <laughs> and it's That's so good. great. It's like every time I go to Knott's and I go maybe twice a month now, I look at Ghost Rider. I'm like, square wheels. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> had square wheels. So it's those memories that I could like, that was, you know, a few while back, but I'm like, it still just feels so good to be in the presence of this kind of stuff where all these memories were made. And it sounds so cheesy and so cliche, but it's, it's really true. And that's kind of like why we all love it. Cause we have those kind of memories there. And we're, every time we go, we make more and 
It's just a special place. Yeah. You know, it, it, we could talk about this place forever, and that's what's so cool about Knott's Berry Farm. So yeah. I would love to have you back sometime. Whenever you want to talk about Knott's Berry Farm, let me know. Um, but hey, uh, so the Knott's Preserved book is out. There's a 100th anniversary edition. Try to yep. check that out. Stay tuned for the Knott's Berry Tales book. That's coming up hopefully soon. No pressure. Yep. I can't thank you guys enough. Seriously, really cool talking to you. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon, and I'll, I'll see you over on the farm. All right. Thanks. 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 All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Bye, sir. Yeah.